Hello guys, welcome to the channel, Gamer Centric. My name is Lee, I'll be your host for this video today, and I've got a banger for you girls and boys today. This is a Warzone video, a Warzone settings video. Now, I've been playing Warzone on PC for quite a long time, so I've optimised quite a lot of settings myself. And I'm going to share them with you today, guys. So basically, we're going to go through some visibility settings, performance, audio, controller, things like that. And this is all up to date settings, so hopefully you guys can copy them and they work out for you. So, I think without further ado, my friends, we're going to get into this right now. Let's get it. Alright, so guys, getting straight into these settings. I'm going to give you some general settings now that you want to do. Obviously, when you're on PC with a controller, you want your field of view at 100. That's about the right spot. It means you can see a bit more on your screen. You know, it's quite nice. So, you definitely want that. You also need the minimap shape. So, you want to put that as square because you, you can see a lot more in the minimap than you can as the circle. It comes standard as a circle. So, make sure that's on square. Minimap rotation, enable that as well. Okay, because obviously it rotates with your movement which is one of the most important things. Also, a little tip for you, if you put on, let's, uh, for example, FPS count, it will give you an FPS count at the top of your screen, latency, packet loss, so you can tell it, if you're lagging, why you're lagging, if you've got packet loss or latency issues. Also, you've got your GPU temperature there. So if you didn't know that, you can enable these little bits and bobs and it'll show you, it stay on top of the screen so you can monitor your PC as you're playing. So we'll get onto the old graphics. This is the big one. So, we are playing, we're not playing at 144, we're playing at 120 refresh rate. Now, I've capped to 120 frames because I personally, it's, person, it's to do with recording for me. Um, my encoder has a bit of overload issues if I go above 20 frames because my PC will go quite a, quite a way above 120. But it's up to you what you want to do. I mean, whatever, basically, whatever your monitor is, you just want to match. Because you don't want V-Sync on, because V-Sync, it causes input lag like crazy. Right now, obviously, V-Sync stops screen tearing. But you don't have to worry about screen tearing if you match your frames to your refresh rate. So, for example, screen refresh rate 120, and then you match your frames here. You press X here and you match your frames to 120. Like this. Okay? And then I'll cap it to 60 and 60 for the menus, because you don't want to be making your PC go crazy for no reason. You know, so leave, leave that how it is. NVIDIA Reflex low latency. You want your display gamma on 2.2. Right now your texture resolution, you want on low. You can put it on normal, but for visibility reasons, keep it on low because normal, the graphics are a lot better. You can see the difference in VRAM at the top, right? Now, normal, it gives you more sort of shaders and, uh, how can I explain it? It makes it, a darker environment better graphics but if you keep it on low it's a brighter environment you get more visibility you also get more fps because it's taken up less um vram memory um keep your texture filter on normal particle quality now leave this on high because wars and optim <laughs> optimization is messed up and there's no difference between low and high so just keep that on high anyway your bullet and impact spray is enabled because who the hell wants to play a shooter with no bullet holes tessellation disable that Leave that how it is. Leave that how it is. Right now, shadow map resolution. I'll leave mine on normal, but you can put it on low. If you put it on low, the shadows are very blocky and grainy, and I really don't like that, so I leave it on normal. But if you have a less powerful computer, then leave it on low, because obviously I'd rather personally rather performance than shadows. So cache spot shadows and sun shadows. This, leave this, if, if you've got 16 gigabyte RAM or more, leave this on enabled. If not, turn it off. Simple as that. If you've got 16 gig enabled, if not, turn it off. Particle lighting low. Ray tracing off, because that will destroy your FPS. Ambient occlusion off. SSR disabled. Now, anti aliasing this is your choice, because if you put this on SMA1 or off, it looks absolutely diabolical. For example, look, that's off, and I really can't stand that. So, either one, one is one would be good. Right, see, if I put it on one, it looks quite good. I leave mine on two, but if you're having performance issues, you can drop it to one or just turn it off, to be honest. If you have real performance issues, just put it off, just turn it off and you'll get maximum FPS. 
depth of field, disable that. Thermic strength. Now you want I've left this on one. But basically the way this works is to cancel uh, to, to get rid of um visual noise, right? If you're anti anti aliasing, don't know why I'm calling it anti aliasing, anti aliasing is not set to SMA uh, to SMA two T two X, then you want this on one. Right, so if you're on one what uh, one X or off you want filmic strength on one. If it's on T2, just turn it off or leave it on. It's up to you. I've just left it on. Motion blur, both of them off. Film grain, zero. There's your settings, guys. That's the optimization I've made. I, think, I find that gives you the best visibility and performance. It's a, it's a good mix, in my opinion. So hopefully that works out for you. Let's go to audio. I've only got that on 10 because I'm recording. When I'm playing, normally, my, my settings are like there. So 50 master. 20 music, 55 dialogue, effects 85. I've also got my audio mix on boost high. This what this is a really nice sound setup. You can hear footsteps crisp because of the boost high. The planes aren't too loud when they're flying over your head. Things like the plane, you know, it kind of quietens down the really loud things, but it makes the footsteps really no noticeable and things like that. So it's, it's definitely a good one. It's definitely a good setup to have. So that's audio. Now we're gonna get onto controller. Now these settings have been messing about for so long, I finally found my favorite that worked for me on controller on PC. So obviously I don't know if you can probably do this on console as well. So I have my dead zone on 0.05 because this is great for reaction time. It basically, when you move your analog set, it's like a little dead zone in the middle. This narrows it. So your player moves faster rather than having to wait till he hits that point for the player to move. The sticks, the stick sensitivities are on seven high seven so these two I've put you want to put on 0 0.90 I feel like that's the best it's the best feeling when you're looking around and aiming at people now aim response curve type some people might disagree with me about this but I personally like dynamic I find dynamic is really it really helps you snap on target and keep on target controller vibration that's totally up to you aim assist now I just use standard but there's other options here if you're, if you're new to warzone you know, you got like strong. Now, uh, for fo focusing is for best uh, for players that are new to analog aiming, as it says there. So that's up to you. Precision's a good one. I know a lot of people use precision. I personally just use standard, but maybe try precision if you're struggling a bit. I wouldn't use that because it's very sticky. Like it is is very over the top aim assist. You know. <laughs> and then the next important one is use reload behavior. Contextual tap. Now. When you're running around on the floor and you got to hold X to pick everything up, hold X to open a door, if you change it to contextual tap, it will just tap X instead of holding. Trust me, it's an absolute lifesaver. It's amazing. Slide behavior, right? So you could do something in this game called slide cancelling. Now, if you change this from hold to tap, put it on tap, when you're sliding, if you press B again during mid slide, you, you'll slide cancel and it resets your sprint every time you do it. So if, you, you know, if you're running across a road, so you slide and tap B again. And if you do that all the way up the road, it keeps resetting your sprint. And also make you a much harder target to hit when you slide cancel all the way up the road. That's why you'll notice you see people bobbing up and down when they're running. It's because they're slide cancelling. That's why you can't hit them with a the sniper. <laughs> so definitely worth definitely something worth doing that is guys. So yeah, that's my settings for Warzone guys. Copy them, give them a go. Maybe give them a little change yourself. If you do change them about yourself and some, something works out for you, be sure to let me know in the comments. And if you did find this video useful, my friends, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all for the next one. Peace.